Um, all right, so let's just put these four together again. We've got Galileo, who has a certain problem with the church in his era, yeah. and finally gets an apology 300 and whatever it was years later. Um, we have Newton, who's actually reading deeply in and sort of in a sort of a mystical realm of, of yeah. Bible, searching for biblical translations and so on. Um, Einstein, who had some quite a lot of things to say about religion, yeah. and the believing in Spinoza's God right. of the universe. Um, who was your fourth one? Darwin, Darwin. who who, be, who was originally going into the church. Yes. Um, so there's this throughout the history of science and, and up up to the present day, of course, there is this yes. co this this conflict going on. Um, yeah. You uh, have, have, have written um, quite extensively on, on these issues. Um, I have a review of, that you did of Darwin's Black Box, which is by Michael Behe, who is a proponent of intelligent design. Um, and, and this is obviously a very um, harsh review. Yes. You, you obviously have a, uh, don't think that there's, there's much to these things. Uh, it, it says here, um, with hard work and even the possibility of progress dismissed, uh, Dr. Behe waves, it, waves his magic wand, discards the scientific method, and launches into his philosopher's stone of universal explanation. It was all designed. Presenting the silly, lazy, ignorant, and intellectually abominable view, essentially discarding reason, and invoking that first resort of the intellectually challenged, that is, God. He presents what he thinks is the most wondrous of theories, that the only way of achieving complexity is by design. You obviously um, have some fairly strong opinions about this. It sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah, does, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and a, a lot of people, in fact, uh, would agree with you on this. What, what's, your, what's your current position on all of these things? Well, that intelligent design is, um, is, is a, an a, abomination. Um, it is the, um, it's a representation of intellectual laziness driven by the desire to, to um, turn this country and as many other countries as possible into a theocracy. Um, uh, it's quite deplorable and, and to, to, um, it, it is so alien to the scientific spirit of saying, of giving a non-explanation and also, of course, which is another strand of the intelligent designer's um, approach to these things, misrepresenting uh, results. Uh, it's, it is a scientific abomination. And um, it really, I think, w people who value the power of the human intellect uh, should ensure that our children are not contaminated by this extraordinarily seductive, lazy abomination. I, you, the, the, the laziness thing keep, you know, turns up in other things that you've written mm. again. And I think that this seems to be a theme that you're just really, yeah. if I may say so, irritated by people just not applying yeah. the appropriate tools mm. to examination of this problem. Exactly. I mean, people give in at the, at the first fence in intelligent design, they say, this can't ever have evolved under the pressures of natural selection. Um, what they really mean is that we are too stupid or too lazy to think of how it might have come about. There is nothing in the biosphere that, in principle, cannot be understood. Um, in terms of um, evolution. Uh, it, but science is hard work. And you know, it's, uh, scientists really have to struggle. Scientists aren't sliding downhill on toboggans. They're actually climbing mountain peaks. And while all these intelligent designers are tobogganing down, uh, because it's a nice, easy way of doing <laughs> going places, we scientists are really struggling to reach true understanding and it's terribly hard work, um, but at the same time terribly um, rewarding by the time you get to the summit. So here's another p passage from, from the, um, there's a 
the Templeton organization currently has a website where it's a number of people who give their opinions to responses to the question, does the universe have a purpose? Mm -hmm. And at the end of yours, which you start, and your answer is no. Um, you should say, we, we should not regard as great the questions that have been invented solely for the sake of eliciting puzzlement. I regard the existence of this extraordinary universe as having a wonderful, awesome grandeur. It hangs there in all its glory, wholly and completely useless. To project onto it our human-inspired notion of purpose would, to my mind, sully and diminish it. Yeah. I, I, I wrote that. I'd forgotten I'd written it. I'm glad I did. It sounds rather good the way you read it as well. Um, and I believe every word of it. Um, I, I, th I think a, a lot of theology is um, grappling with phantoms. Uh, so theologians have invented this almost self-consistent um, subject, which has no contact with physical reality at all. Um, and they invent all sorts of questions, which they then taunt humanity with. Um, one of them is um, cosmic purpose. And they say there must be a purpose you and your science can't explain it. And typical of theologians, they don't respect the power of the human intellect anyway. And they infer that no one will ever understand it. It is ineffable. God's um, purpose cannot be discerned. And of course, that's, um, those are fine words, but utterly meaningless. I mean, there's not... Why should the thing have a purpose? Um, They've invented this question in order to taunt us. And most of the questions that theology grapples with, like theodicy, problem of evil, um, uh, are purely invented and for the amusement of uh, theologians. Uh, if they would admit that what they're doing is playing some uh, huge game of trivial pursuit, then it would be great. We could watch them. They could have a good belly laugh about um, you know, some of the answers they've come up with. But um, they're not real questions. I could, for example, um, propose that there's a, um, a belt of planets between um, Mars and the Earth, uh, which has no effect upon the orbits of the known planets. Um, and there'll be a great deal of scholarly uh, discussion based on why these planets have no effect on the, the other planets and so on. Uh, it would be it's a perfectly um, amusing question for um, after dinner gossip, but um, not really for um, serious consideration. <laughs>